And we're expecting a big storm. I'm just curious, when you got here, did you expect it to be this cold in Portland? <laughs> when I got off the plane from New York uh, last night here in Portland, I was a little stunned. It was beautiful and balmy back home, about 60, and I uh, stepped out into a biting wind. So I was like, <laughs> brr. And it's not what you expect in Portland. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you're obviously here to talk about your book and the show. Are you happy with the way the show turned out? Is it what you experienced in your real experience, in your life? Well, you know, the show is not a biopic. It is an adaptation of my book, of course. And, and frankly, I think it is a much more provocative and interesting approach than a straight biopic ever would have been. Um, I think that Genji Cohan does amazing things, creating an entire world of complex female protagonists. So unlike some other TV shows, it doesn't just focus on this one sort of anti-hero, you know, Piper Chapman is not Tony Soprano. And I think that's one of the reasons that audiences have responded so passionately to the show, is that it's very different from anything we've seen before. Do you think it's because it focuses on women in prison? We were all talking earlier, we think, you hear so much about men in prison and not so much women. Do you think that's what the difference is, so to speak? I, I do think that the difference is that it's an unexpected story. You know, you're right. We don't think of women first when we think about prison or jail or the criminal justice system. But, you know, women have been the fastest growing part of the prison system for several decades. Uh, you know, the, the people that we put in prison are not the same people that we expect. And, you know, most women are in prison for nonviolent and low-level offenses. And those are really the people who have driven the incredible boom in our prison population in this country. You know, on that, since we're on that topic, we just recently, in Oregon, voters passed legal marijuana. Do you have an opinion on that? Because obviously you were, you serve time for drug crimes. Do you have an opinion on legalizing marijuana? I do have an opinion on legalizing marijuana. I think there's no scientific or medical reason that marijuana should be illegal if we're going to have other drugs like alcohol be legal. And I think uh, the rest of the nation is looking to states like Washington and Colorado and now Oregon to see how sensible choices about drug legalization can be made. And I think it's really brave and important that Oregonians have taken this step because it's sensible. You know, it's a much more sensible approach to drug policy than what the U.S. has done for several decades. What are you going to talk about to, what are you talking about tonight? I am going to be talking tonight about my book, Orange is the New Black, My Year in a Women's Prison, which is of course a memoir of the time that I spent locked up in federal prison. And I'll talk about some of the issues that are behind that story, why the U.S. has the biggest prison population in human history and what we can do about that. And I'll talk about, a bit about the show that has been adapted from my book. What is the question you get asked the most? I think the question I get asked the most is the compare and contrast question about, you know, the true story that is told in the book and the adaptation that Genji Cohan has created for Netflix. And I'm always happy to talk about uh, all of the differences and all of the similarities between the real world and the sh world that the show depicts. What's the biggest ch difference? Let's see, the biggest difference between the show and the book. Well, my relationship with my parents and my now husband Larry are quite different than the character of Piper Chapman. And uh, I always say that in the show, the hair actually looks a lot worse than in real life. And so that is a little interesting to me. Marley, you're a huge fan. Did I miss anything? No, I think you really got it. Is there anything I didn't ask that you want to add? No, I mean, I'm delighted you asked me about the marijuana. You know, I'm just super delighted to be here in Portland. I'm always happy to come back here. You know, Oregon has really taken the lead on a lot of sensible approaches to criminal justice reform, and I think that Oregonians deserve a lot of credit for that. Can you give me one quick example? Well, the Partnership for Safety and Justice is a great statewide organization that has really led the way in trying to curb excessive use of the criminal justice system and think about other solutions for public safety safety other than putting people in prison and jail. What if we get a picture for you with you? I'd love that. Can I ask you a question? Oh, sorry. How do you feel the reception has been from the show and how the reception from the people learning about women's prison? And how do you feel that people have responded to that? 
Right. Um, you know, I think one of the realities is that the the huge prison population that we have, and specifically the dramatic increase in incarceration of women, wasn't something that people were thinking or talking about very much. And I'm really grateful that the reception to the book and the reception to the show, especially, has provoked a much more spirited public debate.